guys, what's going on? And welcome to the Barbells and BJJ podcast for, I think, the fifth time of trying this. I think it's important to, to mention that as the topic we'll be going on to. It'll become particularly pertinent if this is the, the successful recording, if this is the one that makes it in. But yeah, just coming to you today, this should have been done yesterday, but Georgie Boy got a little bit distracted with Spider Man 2. Um, because yesterday was the first time that I was able to set back foot into my place of work to work again. I started back my phase return to work scheme yesterday. And it was also the first time that I was able to start back to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or BJJ as it will be referred to from this point onwards. Or Jiu Jitsu. I might say Jiu Jitsu. I might say BJJ. But BJJ is easier than saying Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Anyway, that's completely unrelated. Uh, also just realizing how massive my forehead looks when I've pinned my hair all the way back with the headphones and the fact that the light is shining on it isn't really doing me any favors whatsoever. You can see with the, the video, if you're watching the video. But uh, as I said, it's always important to bring up that background context about returning to work and returning to the gym. And whilst I tried to think up a nice clickbaity attractive title for this episode, currently got it labeled as just getting back to it. Uh, I thought we'd go over a little bit about, um, you know, what happens when you fall off the horse, so to speak, or fall off the wagon, uh, how to get back on it. And one particularly important aspect of that, I believe, is self-talk, which we'll get onto in a minute. So first off, I'll go over a little bit of the background context as to why I wasn't able to train or work or anything like that. And if you go back and listen to my episode titled Who, What, Why, you'll know a little bit about this story. So basically in that episode, which I've labeled as number four, thinking that it was a good idea to start the labeling process with number zero, not realizing how much that would actually screw me over in the future and that I'd have to spend a little bit of extra time probably going back and fixing that because it's screwing with my labeling process quite a bit. Anyway, past me making great decisions. We're going to go over, oh sorry, in that episode I went over a little bit about what happened to me with regards to when I got taken into hospital on the 7th of July of this year. Um, glossing over it a little bit, I was severely ill with a disease known as meningococcal septicemia, also known as septic meningitis. So basically I had meningitis, very bad strain of bacterial meningitis, which also turned septic. So that's where that term comes from. Pardon me, by the way. Anyway, uh, I had to be rushed in. Uh, I had to be rushed into critical care, ICU. I was put in a medically induced coma. Uh, and obviously they were told, my mom, dad, my girlfriend, everybody, family were told that there was a significant risk that I wasn't going to make it. After that then as well, um, once I'd recovered from that in ICU, I'd also developed a fungal infection known as candidemia, which develops from the candida fungus, uh, which can also be very, very dangerous. And as a result, I had to stay in hospital for about six weeks, just over six weeks. And I was released on the 21st of August with long-term treatment for the fungus and for a blood clot I developed when I was in ICU. So I had antifungal medication and I had anticoagulant blood thinner medication to get rid of the blood clot. And it was that. Uh, it was the mixture of those two that meant that I could not uh, really work for the time and also I couldn't do any combat sport. I could gradually return myself to fitness with strength training and stuff like that, provided I took care with, you know, the equipment I used and making sure not to go like at it like a bull at the gate, which I'm very, very prone to. But I could do the gym work. I just couldn't do any combat sport or get in the pool or anything like that. So anyway... Uh, getting back to it, um, my blood thinner course ended eventually. It was two months, but I couldn't train for another four weeks because the effects can persist for up to four weeks afterwards uh, with the particular um, blood thinner medication, Rivaroxaban, which is what I was on. So anyway, uh, getting off topic a little bit. That's just a little bit about how I had to spend such a really long layoff from training. All in all, obviously going from the 7th, to about yesterday, which is the 20th of November. What's that? So that's uh, 7th. So then we got August, September, October. So nearly four months, I think. Nearly four months or three months. Between three and four months. Either way, it's quite a long, quite a long layoff. Um, and yesterday was obviously, as I said, my first session back. And I really loved it. I really missed it. 
Um, and I would highly recommend jujitsu really to anybody, to be honest. But uh, that's a story for, that's a conversation for another time about the benefits of jujitsu, and we'll be doing future benefit, uh, future uh, episodes on uh, jujitsu and recaps of trainings and so on. But anyway, uh, say so getting back to it, um, kind of lost my train of thought for a little bit. But um, yeah, as I said, getting back into it, it was difficult. Don't get me wrong, it's been a while since I've trained with that intensity. Uh, and obviously with it being my first one back as well. And I'm glad that nobody was, in theory, easy on me. I'm glad of that. Um, uh, obviously, there's a couple of the guys, especially the, the, some, the two of the higher belts that I rolled with. One of them is out coach, by the way. Um, he, he didn't lay it on me, didn't try to hurt me or anything like that. But some of the other guys that, you, you know, they rolled with the intensity they normally would. And I was, I was happy with that. I was happy with that. And it was a nice little pressure test to get me back into it. So thank you guys. If you're listening, thank you for that. Um, but yeah, as I said, getting back to it, as I said, it's been a while since I've trained with that level of intensity. Uh, obviously for five minutes with one minute rest in between, it's not easy, especially when you've got somebody on your back that's trying to kill you. Um, obviously, we're, we're not actually trying to kill each other, but um, yeah, we are trying to fold each other's clothes with, still, with us still inside them or with the other person still inside them or getting to do a little bit of involuntary yoga. That's the, the nice way that you can think about uh, jujitsu. I'm really selling it right now, I know. But, um, but yeah, it is a tremendous, pardon me, tremendously demanding sport, both in terms of its physicality and its mental, your mental capacity as the athlete. Because jiu-jitsu is the, is the sport where you have to be able to work well under pressure of death and near suffocation. That's the, the best way I like to think about it. I was on, on like a, a football field or something like that and not taking this into any way to demean football players or anything like that. But, um, you know, that at least you're not under the threat of death any imminent moment. Because if you make one mistake in jiu-jitsu, you can potentially very well find yourself, you know, on the verge of going unconscious and in a position where you will end up unconscious and stuff like that. Anyway, anyway, um, again, really, really selling this sport. But... I wanted to talk a little bit about the process, as I said, of getting back on the horse or getting back on the wagon, as some people to say. And a lot of people, and this could apply to anything really, to training, to, to weight loss, to dieting, etc. A lot of people, they, um, you, you know, if they try to lose weight and, and they fall off the wagon temporarily, they'll very, very easily use that as an excuse to, to not get back on. Either it'll be, you know, oh, I was never any good anyway, so what's the point? Or, as I said, I've, I've already failed, so what's the point? It's not perfect. It's classic perfectionist mindset, right? And I think if I would have taken that with jujitsu, I never ever would have lasted as long as I would. If I'd eventually taken that, if that had been my predominant mental philosophy all the time with regards to the gym, if I hadn't changed my philosophy at any point, I probably wouldn't be training. In fact, if I hadn't realized... uh some things about this philosophy I'd probably not be here for, for other reasons. Let's just say that. Um, the wrong thought process can potentially drive you into a lot of negative thought patterns, and negative behaviors. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that. So yeah, another st story for another time. But the importance of mindset, and also in particular the importance of self-talk. thing that I said there about that sometimes people can... You know, you can fall off the wagon with regards to your perfect weight loss program and all of a sudden there's no point and there's no point in you even trying anymore. You've already failed, so to speak. And a lot of people take that mindset. In my opinion, it's not a particularly positive mindset. It's a mindset that demands perfection in and from a place where perfection doesn't exist. Okay? No such thing as the perfect diet so to speak as much as people would love to tell you you need to go carnivore you need to go vegan you need to go paleo keto pescatarian everything like that there is no such thing it simply processes the work and processes that don't and the processes that work are going to differ from person to person like i said the overall principle for fat loss or weight loss for example is a calorie deficit that's the overall principle it just matters whether you can keep doing what you're doing if you're doing keto because somebody's told you that it's the best but you hate it then don't do it it's that simple but you decide to go keto, for example, but you have one day where you piss on the stick and you're not in ketosis and you think you've, you think you've failed. You think that all of a sudden everything's gone to waste and you, you, know, you might as well not even try anymore. Not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case. But a lot of people can get into this you know, negative self-talk and especially comparison. 
uh, and comparison to others and really not even comparison to others, but comparison to how we see other people, I think is a very, very important. And I'm going to give you a phrase here, which I think is a very, very true phrase. And that is comparison is the thief of joy. And as if you spend your time comparing yourself to others constantly, you, you will rob yourself of any joy you have at looking at yourself. And that's because we love to put other people on a pedestal. We love to put other people on a pedestal of how we see them. And we love to put ourselves down in the gutter. I think at least that's, that's, that's what's been the case for me well, ever since, ever since I realized how much the brain could think, I suppose. But like it's not the case anymore. And oftentimes I think it's not even just that we're putting other people on a pedestal, but it's often how we see other people. We can very, very easily look at other people, especially if we are in a position where we're not looking at ourselves in a very, very positive way. And it seems as almost we're comparing everybody else's good things that we see, the good things about everyone else, we compare into the bad things that we see about ourselves. It's almost like we're doing everything we can to maximize our own misery. And I think it's a lot of the reason why a lot of people don't even get to, to blue belt in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, for example. By the way, that's my rank in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as a blue belt. And obviously I've got a lot more to learn about the sport. I think everybody's got it. Everybody's got any more to learn about the sport, no matter how, you know, how far you get, there's always more things that you can learn. But anyway, um, uh, like I was saying, a lot of people don't make it that far because they start jujitsu, for example, and they do it for a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months to turn it up regularly. But they have that string of bad sessions or they get in their, they get in their ass handed to them by the higher belts or, or whoever. They realize that they're not the best and, you know, everything like that. And all of a sudden they start comparing themselves to others or they start looking at themselves in a negative way and they stop. And there's been people that have come into the gym after I've started that they've gone a couple of months and you never see them again. There are people that have never come back. And I think that's quite, quite sad because I think jujitsu can benefit a lot of people. It can benefit pretty much anybody. But it, it also shows that negative mindset in a way, I think. And obviously, some of these people, I haven't been able to speak to them about it. But certainly from, from my perspective, there have been times where I've wanted the jacket all in and I've said, what's the point? What's the point in this? What, what, is, what is the point in doing this? I'm coming here. I'm getting my ass handed to me. You know, I'm, I'm walking away from some sessions nearly in tears. There have been some, it's been some sessions where I've, I've shed a tear on the mats afterwards just because of how bad it's gone. Like, for, for whatever reason. But what matters, and, and it's through that comparison. It's through that comparison to others. I've, you know, feeling like every role I have to win. And that's another, that's another bad thing as well. I feel like you have to win every role in the gym, so to speak. There's going to obviously be roles that you, that you lose. But it's almost that, again, going back to that comparison element. It's like the only person you should be comparing yourself to is yourself and who you were yesterday. If you're better than the person you were yesterday, then that's what really matters. It's a concept known as the aggregation of marginal gains. It's basically a way of implying, applying compound interest to physical activity and really any other intervention. It was popularized by the coach of the, uh, the great British cycling team. And basically they, they took this idea of basically everything that we can, we're going to make 1% better every day. And this, this is where this aggregation of marginal gains comes from. You're going to be one percent better uh, every single day, and they they took everything. They looked at like the material the bikes are made out of, the you know the short material, the shorts material that the cyclists would wear. Um, you know how to make the bikes like you know lighter. What can they make the the tires out of to make them better? Helmets. How can they make them more aerodynamic? How can they make their athletes sleep better? Every little thing, conceivably that could be improved in order to result in improved performance, they did. And then that was when British cycling really started to take a positive turn. I can't remember when this was. This was in the early 2010s. I can't remember the, the coach's name. It slips me. Uh, it's a story that is recounted really well in the book Atomic Habits, by the way, by James Clear. So go read that if you haven't already. But um, yeah, the, um, the, that was when British cycling really started to get its uptick and really started to get really, really successful. And that's when you have athletes like Chris Froome that are winning back-to-back -to -back Tour de France's, if I'm not mistaken. And 
you know, we have a massive cycling industry now, for professional cyclists at least, and, and cycling competition. But it's that idea, that idea that we can apply to ourselves, that we're going to make ourselves 1% better every single day. And that's almost like what the training process is. We turn up to training, whether it be jujitsu, whether it be running, whether it be in the gym, whether it be swimming. And we're looking to just get that 1% better every single day. Sometimes that 1% is just turning up to training when you didn't, you know, when you don't want to. I can often be it, but doing little things that we can to make ourselves better every single time. And as a result, when we look back, we compare ourselves to ourselves. We stop comparing ourselves to other people. Uh, a good quote by Warren Gatland is, if you're headhunting, you're not focused on your game. So if you're looking around at other people and seeing what they are doing and constantly comparing yourself to them, you're not focused on yourself and you need to be focused on yourself if you want to develop, if you want to improve. Because ultimately, you focusing on others is not doing anything to improve you. If anything, it's just making you feel worse. Whereas if you stop focusing on others and you start focusing on what you can do, then, you know, you start getting better. So, yeah. And then that self-talk, I'm tying it back to that self-talk, tying it back to the self-talk. That self-talk then changes from, I want to beat this person. And obviously there's other people like elite athletes, for example, that, you know, they're focused on beating other people, for example. Jiu-Jitsu is a great example of this where, you know, it's, it can be very personal, but a lot of the time it's just I, not necessarily wanting to be better than this person or these people. I just want to be better than who I was. And this r relentless self-improvement. Not to spite others, necessarily, but just because you want to be the best that you can be. And that is where I think the fulfillment really comes from. And I think if I'd gone into, if I'd gone into the gym that Monday which was yesterday, and I hadn't had that, that mindset, then, yeah, if it had gone bad, I, I might not have gone back. You know what I mean? I might have thought that everybody else had progressed way too much, and obviously some of the people that, maybe some of the people that I've rolled with before and I could consistently get the, the upper hand on, they, they were giving me a run for my money this time around, and they showed that they had come on leaps and bounds and obviously I wasn't able to train. I'd stagnated, you know? So really big props to, big props to you guys, by the way. Obviously I'm showing you guys out, other guys I trained with yesterday. Big props to you guys. You guys come along with leaps and fucking bounds. So well done, you guys. But, um, but yeah, like, um, I could have easily just said, you know what? Like these guys are drastically outpacing me. I'm not going to be able to keep up. Look how much they've come on in the last couple of months. I'm not going to be able to keep up. What's the point? But no. But no. We're back. I'm just going to keep focus on doing what we can to get better every single day. And one of the things you can very, very easily do with regards to that, guys, is to fix your self-talk. You're in control of that voice in your head, whether you like, whether you believe it or not obviously you know unless you're you know unless you have one of the conditions where you're not in control of your own mind but um i think if you've sat here and listened to me for nearly 20 minutes you've probably consciously chosen to do that what's wrong with you what's wrong with you anyway that voice in your head is is, is in constant control by you you control whether you bring yourself up or put yourself down. Make sure you're doing everything you can consistently to bring yourself up. There's going to be plenty of things in life that are going to try and put you down. Plenty of other people as well. Plenty of other things. And it can come out of nowhere. So you don't need to be adding to those with your self-talk. So make it positive. Look for a positive Oh, nice voice break, Judgy boy. Sometimes you got to look hard for a positive, but every cloud has a silver lining. You just need to really, really look for it. Okay. Uh, that was a bit rambly. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be of any use to anybody. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, looking forward to speaking with you again in the future. Yeah, going over training sessions and, and everything like that. But yeah, I hope you have a good day. Go train hard. I'll catch up with you soon. Out.